Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Godzilla and Kong was just released in theaters. It's part of a planned MonsterVerse trilogy, starting with Godzilla vs. Kong. The directors talked a little about that. I know there are a lot of questions about the way they left things and where the next movie is going to pick up, how that's going to connect with the Monarch TV show, so we'll break it all down, because the director also talked about crossing over with the TV show. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos, and careful for spoilers if you have not seen the movie yet because we need to talk about the ending in the new lore, all the new titans that they introduced. There was a lot, a lot of new backstory they introduced for the Hollow Earth. At the end of the movie, they reveal that Scar King is an ancient ape titan. He's more of an orangutan, but they're part of the ape family. They refer to Kong's family, his race, as the great ape titans, but there are a number of subspecies of apes inside that group. The new lore that they reveal about the Hollow Earth and Kong's race, Godzilla's own history, is that at some point in history, like ancient history, they're not totally clear on exactly which year, but it was ancient times, Scar King usurped control over all the tribes of ape titans and tried to use them to take over the surface world. So this would have had to have been after part of Gia's tribe left the Hollow Earth and started living on Skull Island. The directors revealed in the past that all life on Earth is meant to have originated inside the Hollow Earth meaning that Gia's tribe had to have been amongst the first humans on the planet. They were not super clear on that plot point. Like, there's a lot of things like this in the movie where they kind of brush over, like, really important plot points. Like, wait a minute, what? They probably leave a lot of those details to dig in with future movies, the Monarch TV show and future seasons, and a lot of the tie-in material, too, like a lot of the comic books. During that ancient war, Scar King gained control over Shimo, who they call the Ancient Titan in the movie. This is another one of those vague plot points that they refer to. I think most people took that to mean that she was either the first titan or one of the first titans. Shimo also literally translates to white or cold in Japanese. During the movie, it seemed like he was controlling her using one of the crystals that he had taken from her spine, like a piece of her own body. Using it to force her to do his bidding, basically turning her into his own personal attack titan. She's huge, way bigger than Godzilla, and more powerful than almost all the titans just on her own. But during that ancient war, Godzilla was able to stop Scar King and all the apes, imprison all of them in a subterranean section of the Hollow Earth, which Kong accidentally winds up uncovering. This is another bit of new lore that they introduced in the movie. When the movie picks up, they reveal Monarch has only mapped a very, very tiny percentage of the Hollow Earth, so that's mostly to set the idea that they find future threats, future allies, potential really important things, other major titans from the Toho lore, in other sections of Hollow Earth as they continue to uncover them in future movies. Oh look, there's this giant new cave structure with a brand new titan that we haven't seen before that's threatening us. Very easy way to mine new story for new movies. The places where they found the ape titans and Gia's tribe hiding out were just the first examples of them finding hidden areas down there. Godzilla imprisons the apes, then leaves going to the surface world to become king of the titans above ground, being sort of like the titan cop of the surface world. Previous movies made it seem like both Godzilla and Kong are just the latest members of their races. There were other Godzillas that existed before this Godzilla, like he's just the child of a previous Godzilla. But the way Eileen Andrews narrates the lore in the temple during this movie, making it seem like this Godzilla has always been the only Godzilla, which would make him millions, like many millions of years old. I think that's meant to be the official explanation that they're going with in the movies now. Like Godzilla can just keep regenerating himself and frequently he and the other Titans will just hibernate for very long periods of time, explaining how they can live so long. It also explains how Scar King can be that ancient, usurping king taking over the ape tribe, and he's still alive in present day, and doesn't seem like he's that worse for wear. But before this ancient war, the humans on the surface world, the Titans, Godzilla, all the apes down in Hollow Earth all lived in harmony. The apes were meant to be the protectors of man, and Godzilla was meant to be the protector of nature. It sounds like at some point, Kong's parents escaped to Skull Island, gave birth to him, then were killed by skull crawlers, and he grew up on his own with a portion of Gia's tribe who had also migrated with Kong's parents, or at some point after that. Scar King winds up finding Gia's tribe, who are living in a cave protected by camouflage barrier created by Mothra, and inside they have a portal directly between the surface world and Hollow Earth. Scar King makes it through with Shimo, Godzilla, Kong, eventually Suko, and they have their big final boss fight in Rio de Janeiro. R.I.P. to Rio de Janeiro, again. Kong had gotten his Beast Gauntlet upgrade after Shimo hurts his arm with her cold breath. They also reveal that Monarch absorbed all of Apex's technology and research after the events of Godzilla vs. Kong when the company collapsed. 
they started to create mech weapons to enhance Kong's strength based on Mechagodzilla because they expected Kong to have to face even bigger threats in the future. That's another big teaser for future movies, other Toho Titans from the lore showing up, like even more powerful Titans that Kong would have to fight. The gauntlet is just meant to be part of that, like their project was shut down by the US government before they could finish more weapon upgrades for Kong, but he still got the gauntlet at the end of the movie, it's still working, so he'll continue to have it if they want to bring it back in the next sequel movie. Now everybody's wondering if they're going to give more upgrades to Godzilla, like what different colors can we turn him in the next movie with more upgrades, like how much radiation could he theoretically absorb? Godzilla joins Kong after Mothra and Gia win him over. The fight that they have when they first meet, like he tells him to stop bro, we need help. The director said that that fight is meant to be inspired by the epic fight from They Live. It doesn't go on nearly as long as the fight during They Live though. If it wasn't clear, the Mothra that we see in this movie is just a reborn version of the Mothra from Godzilla of King of Monsters who was killed. In the lore, Mothra always lays an egg, and the egg is essentially another version of her reborn with all of her previous memories, making her functionally immortal as long as she's able to lay that egg before she's killed. So basically this is the exact same version of Mothra from King of the Monsters. Godzilla and Kong, with Suko's help, are able to destroy Scar King's crystal from Shimo's spine that he's been using to control her with pain, taking her out of the fight just long enough for them to both stop Scar King. Kong with the Beast Gauntlet is also way more powerful than Scar King with his spine whip, just the two of them. He's also way stronger even without the gauntlet. He hoists him up long enough for Shimo to freeze him to get revenge for controlling her for so long with her cold breath. Then Kong shatters him, smashing his body on the ground into a thousand pieces. So RIP Scar King. Then the movie ends pretty quickly after this with them wrapping up all the different storylines and leaving a couple of setups for the next sequel. Godzilla just takes off to return to his nap in the Roman Colosseum where he was napping earlier in the movie. This movie is generally more of a Kong movie with a little bit of Godzilla in it. Like it's more of Kong's version of Godzilla King of Monsters where Kong becomes King of Apes, King Kong so to speak. He returns to Hollow Earth with Suko and Shimo who are now both friends of his apparently. Like he scratches Shimo's head and pats her, she nuzzles him a little like a golden retriever. So they're buddies. And the way they leave them, Kong will just free them from their makeshift prison in this cave area of Hollow Earth and take them back to a nicer upper portion of the Hollow Earth. If you remember during the last movie, Godzilla vs. Kong, he goes into this ancient throne room with a chair that looks more like an actual throne that his ancestors sat on. That might be the place they're living when the next movie picks up. But essentially this scene is him becoming King Kong. I think there might be some copyright trademark issues with them actually calling him King Kong in the movies. So I think that's why in these movies you only hear them refer to him as King, nobody literally calls him King Kong. And he'll just continue to rule the hollow earth while Godzilla rules the surface world, so they're both kings of the monsters at the same time. There are a couple minor plot points with this whole ape tribe down in this subterranean area too, like what was Scar King making them do this whole time, they never fully explain. It seems like a mine, but like why would they need to mine things, there's nothing to barter down there, like they're not selling anything to anyone, so they don't need wealth. You can let me know what you think that was all about, like what was the whole point, what was he having them mine, and why did he need to mine things down there. Gia says goodbye to her ancestors in the hollow earth and returns to the surface world with Eileen Andrews, but they explain that her people can communicate psychically and they'll just continue coming back to the hollow earth in future movies, so this is just goodbye for now, and they'll probably just continue to do psychic Skype calls like we saw in the movie. Bernie Hayes had this whole arc in the movie where he wanted to be legitimized. It sounds like he'll be working for Monarch in a more official capacity now because he used to work for Apex. Eileen Andrews had basically told him she'd give him anything he wanted and he just wanted to be legitimized. Nobody believed him when he was talking about what happened during Godzilla vs Kong with Mechagodzilla and they had this whole bit with a troll on his podcast called Ghidorah Lover. That person is like the noob master of the monsterverse. Maybe they'll bring that joke back and reference it in the next movie, we'll see. But because the director said that he'd already pitched a trilogy of MonsterVerse movies with this whole Godzilla vs Kong 3 movie arc, there are a couple unresolved plot points that they leave at the end of the film. So I think the idea is that the next movie will have both Godzilla and Kong in it again teaming up. But I think the idea in this movie was to turn Kong into King Kong mostly. Now he has control of the Hollow Earth, he can command most of the Titans down there. So the next movie will probably debut more monsters from the Toho lore that both Godzilla and Kong will have to team up again for with the help of Kong's race and other titans that they each control. Maybe more tech upgrades from Apex that Monarch has for them now. 
Really, the only way to upgrade Godzilla will be just to fire more nuclear weapons at him, like just juice him up with more nuclear energy. Each new movie, they turn him a new color, so we'll just guess what color he turns in that next movie. And for those of you asking about Godzilla and Shimu actually reproducing, like does she have some eggs out there somewhere? Is that part of the movie that just didn't make it in? All I could think about when they were on screen together was how to train your dragon three with the two different dragons. Now, Shimu is not a lady Godzilla, like a female of Godzilla species, but there were a couple jokes in the movie about Titans reproducing with other Titans from different species. So yes, I do think it is possible for Godzilla to mate with Shimu. And because there are so many unknown hidden areas still inside Hollow Earth, they can introduce more threats in the sequel movie from one of those places deeper inside. At the beginning of the movie, Eileen Andrews just makes this big thing about exploring Hollow Earth on a continuing basis. Like another Titan villain is down there trapped or hibernating somewhere they haven't seen yet. And one of the other big differences at the end of this movie is the actual end credits. So there weren't any special teasers during the actual credits, like no graphics or cave drawings or anything over the credits like you've seen in previous movies. No special monarch notes talking about other titans that we didn't see pop up in the movie. And the movie just in general was pretty short. Like they end with Kong freeing his people, then boom, slammed to black, regular credits, no special images or teasers for more monsters or titans or anything. I think the director said they did it that way just because they wanted to wait to see how this movie did financially before greenlighting the next sequel in the trilogy. And so far as of me posting this video, the box office for the opening weekend seems like it's going to be pretty solid, so I think it's a pretty safe bet that they will do that next movie. So let me know in the comments which Toho monster or like which next titan do you want them to introduce as the next main villain? There are a lot, there are a lot of them to pick from. But I think the idea is that Adam Wingard probably comes back to direct that next movie after he's done with his other movies. Then maybe after that, if they continue with other movies beyond that, they'll just kind of reset things and they'll do something a little bit different with a completely different director. Overall, a pretty good year for Godzilla fans. Like we had Godzilla minus one amazing Godzilla movie. We had the Monarch TV show, which is also pretty solid, but like the best human characters we've seen in the MonsterVerse so far. And the director also clarified that they will start crossing over more with the Monarch TV show after the success of Godzilla and Kong. Like they were waiting to see how this movie would do before they do a lot of heavy crossover with the TV show. So at some point, they will cross over. If you haven't watched the TV show, the TV show takes place earlier in the timeline though. So I think at some point in future seasons, they will just catch up with the present day timeline. If there are any other teasers or Easter eggs or references in the movie that you're confused about or that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments and I'll do more videos as we learn more about what the next sequel is going to be. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. We have Deadpool and Wolverine coming out later this year. Marvel just dropped a new teaser for the Thunderbolts movie. You can click here to watch that and click here for my brand new Deadpool and Wolverine videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.